Hello, I'm Adrian, and today I'm looking at a real folk blues classic in the shape of Stagger Lee by Mississippi John Hurt. And before I go any further, let me just play a little bit of it for you. Everybody, cruel staggerly, that bad man, cruel staggerly. So yes, Stagger Lee, this is a song that's been done many different ways by many different people and there are lots of variations on the lyric and even on the title you hear it referred to as Stagger Lee or Stack -a Lee or Stag O Lee and it's a song that's been recorded by many different people, I think Bob Dylan, Woody Guthrie, Nick Cave, uh, apparently there's even a version by James Brown which I've, I've not heard but I wonder what that sounds like. So the song tells the true tale of the murder of a man called Billy Lyons or Billy De Lyon by the eponymous bad man Stagger Lee and apparently it was some kind of gambling dispute which took place on Christmas night in 1895 and if I'd have known that a few weeks ago I could have made this a contender, a slightly dark contender for my Christmas special. Now Mississippi John Hurt is somebody that I first came across on the anthology of American folk music back in the 60s, man. No, not, not back in the 60s. Um, I first came across it probably sometime during the 1990s when it was reissued on CD. And this is my copy of the, the so-called Harry Smith anthology. And this was a big influence on people like Bob Dylan in the 60s. And it's a great, weird and wonderful collection of early American folk and blues music. And there are a couple of Mississippi John Hurt tracks on there. And listening to those made me want to explore his music a bit more deeply. And I've really grown to love his fingerstyle playing and he's got a great voice as well. And I think that if you're at all interested in fingerstyle guitar, then it's essential that you learn one or two Mississippi John Hurt songs. So today I'm going to show you how to play Stagger Lee. So this lesson is based on the original 1928 recording of the song. It's a song which I think Mississippi John Hurt recorded several times subsequently. And all of the recordings that I've heard are actually pretty similar. But just to be clear, this lesson is based on the original recording. We are in the key of D and the song is based around three simple chords. We've just got D, G and A. That's the 145 in the key of D. There is actually a capo on at the first fret but I'm going to ignore that and talk about the song as though it were in the key of D. We're dealing with an 11 bar form which is just repeated. There's an introduction, there's the verses where he's singing and then in between each verse there's a little instrumental break, but all of those sections are essentially the same thing. Let me begin by just playing through the introduction for you. With Mississippi John Hurt, it's really all about the thumb. You can hear and you can see that he's just keeping a steady thumb going four beats to the bar throughout this entire song. So why don't we begin on a D chord by getting that thumb going. And I think for most of this song, where possible, I think if you can hold down those familiar D, G and A chord shapes, even though we're not always playing all of the notes in each of those chords, I think it makes sense to hold down those Shape. So we're going to begin by holding down a D chord and we're going to get the thumb going and to start with the thumb is just playing that open D string, four beats to the bar, nice and steady. And whilst that is happening we're playing the melody or the top line part on the higher strings and the fingers are going to be playing these notes so that the top line part goes like this. So what we've got there, we've got an open top string and then we're hammering down with the second finger. Then we're playing the B string, which we're holding down at the third fret. 
We're doing that again and again. Then we're playing the G string. Then we've got that hammer on move one more time. Open top string, B string, second fret on the top string, and then we're just playing the B string and the top string again. So. So the tricky thing, particularly if you've not played in this kind of style before, is getting all of that happening together. And I think the only way to do it is just to take it nice and slowly and really just work on the coordination between the thumb and the fingers. Really notice whether those top line notes are happening at the same time as the thumb or whether they're happening in between the thumb notes as a kind of syncopation. So let me just try and take you through exactly what's going on. Here on the first beat of the first bar, we're playing the, the thumb note and we've got the open top string. Then we're hammering down to the second fret. Got another thumb note. Then we're playing the B string. Then we've got the thumb. Then we've got the open top string again. Then we're hammering down that second finger. And as we're hammering down, we're also playing another thumb note. So we've got the, the open top string, hammer, and thumb at the same time and then we're playing the B string on the, the the and of four the last note in that bar there's one and two and three and four Take your time getting that together and that might be enough to start with just to learn that first bar to get comfortable with it and just do it round and round and round until you till it starts to feel natural and once you've got that that the rest of the, the 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 first few bars of the piece are much the same we've got the first bar second bar there we're bringing in the G string on the last beat so then bar three that hammer on note is just displaced by half a beat so we've got the thumb first open top string then we're hammering down with the thumb B string thumb open top string thumb B string Next bar, we've got the fourth and the first strings together, thumb, B string, thumb, top string, thumb. So that's the first four bars. just at the very end of that fourth bar there's just an open B string which just acts to smooth the the way onto the next chord which is the G chord so we move to the G chord and then we've got this so notice now that the thumb has started to alternate the thumb is now going thumb is just moving from the sixth string to the fourth string it's just on the very first beat that we've got the fifth string so we've got five four six four six four six four and we're going to add in some higher notes here so what we've got to start with is we've got the a string and we've got the open top string then the thumb and then I'm using my little finger to play the third fret on the B string, thumb, open top string, thumb on the D string, and then the B string again. Then we've got the thumb and the open top string, thumb, open B string, thumb, 
thumb, then we've got thumb, B, thumb, B held down at the third fret, thumb, open top string, thumb, B string at the third fret. So a little bit hard to describe some of this stuff. I will try and write all of this out in music and tab for you, but let me just play that slowly. That last bar there is quite syncopated. All of the finger notes are falling in between the thumbs. Uh, then we're back to D. Just, just for one bar there. We're holding down the D shape. We're playing the, the fifth and the top strings together. Open D string. B string. Thumb open A string. Then we've got the open top string, thumb playing the D string. Then we're going into the A chord, so we've just got the, the second fret on the G string, really just as an anticipation as we're going in into the A chord. And then we've got So the A chord shape that we're holding down here, some people refer to this as the long A. So we're, we're barring with our first finger the, uh, the second fret on the, the D, G and B strings. Then with your little finger, you're pressing down here at the, um, the, the fifth fret or the, or the sixth fret, however you want to see it, on, on, the, top, on the top string. So um, the thumb is going like this, just between the fifth and the fourth strings. And then we're going to add in the fingers. So we've got the fifth and the second strings, thumb, finger playing that top string, thumb, thumb, then another thumb, and then playing the fourth and the top strings together, then just the B string, open A, then we're changing to the third fret on the top string for an A7 kind of sound. If you listen closely to the recording, you can just hear a couple of open strings there. You've got an open D and an open B. Those, those are kind of just, again, notes just smoothing the chord change in between the chord changes. And then we're back to the D chord with our same little hammer-on lick that we had earlier. Now that's the introduction, I'm just going to put that together for you slowly. Now, once you've got the introduction, the rest of the song is actually very, very similar. It's more or less the same thing, just repeated. But there are a few interesting differences, so I'll just take you through those. Now, once he starts singing, on that initial D chord, we've actually got an alternating thumb instead of that droning single note thumb that we've got on the introduction. So when he starts singing, we've now got... Notice the alternating thumb. The top line also just simplifies slightly whenever he's singing. There are a few less of those syncopated notes. It's just that simple hammer on at the start of each bar. So, police officer, how can it be? Carries on exactly the same as the introduction. slight variation actually in that bar there when he's singing um, on the the long a bar we've got those top line notes are just syncopated we've got thumb thumb 
high E, thumb, high E. So that just happens when he's singing. Then in the instrumental, it goes back to how it was in the in the introduction. So the instrumental passage goes like this. We've got. So most of the time he seems to play the instrumental like that. So again, it's slightly different top line from the, the introduction or when he's singing. We've just displaced that top line hammer on. It's coming in on the, the upbeat of one. Carries on the same as before. Um, When he's not singing this bit is the same as the the introduction so that's roughly what's going on there i think mississippi john hurt himself throws in some variations here and there so it's not exactly the same from verse to verse and from instrumental section to instrumental section so uh, you know have a close listen to it uh, see what you make of it you don't have to play it exactly like he, he plays it anyway but uh, that's the the general gist of what's going on so that's about it for today. If you didn't already know the music of Mississippi John Hurt, then I hope this video serves as an interesting introduction and I hope it encourages you to go and check out some more of his music because it is fantastic. Hope you all enjoy getting this song together. Thank you very much for watching. I shall see you next time. Bye bye.